All right, what is the difference between average and average x when it comes to BBI functions? Uh, well, in short, average is really meant for simple column calculations, whereas average x is for everything else, especially if there's any calculations involved. Um, and so to kind of illustrate this, let's just say that someone is asking for the average of total salaries per department. Um, assuming that total salaries is calculated by multiplying the salary by the bonus, all right? And so what we have in front of us is a bunch of business groups that I randomly created employee numbers, some salaries, as well as the, the bonus multiplier. Um, and so what, what we need here is we need to calculate the total salaries and then the average. So if we were to start, and if we were to start with the average function, so we'll call this average total salaries, what you'll notice is when you call the, call the function, it only accepts a singular argument, one column name. And, but in order to calculate total salary, we need two columns, you know, the product of two columns. And so if I try to brute force it, yes, I can call in salary, but when I try to call in bonus, it does not allow me. You see, it's all grayed out here, okay? And so if you're really stuck on using average, what is the solution then? Well, if you go back to the function parameters, um, what you'll remember is that average, uh, ultimately needs a single column. So in order to get the total salary, we just have to do that work externally of this. We just have to create a column that it, you know, that is we need to just create a column that does that multiplication prior to referencing it in with the average function. So in the table, I just create a column, I'll call this total salary, and I'll just do the product of sal oops, salary times bonus, all right? And then I'll slot that in to kind of show what we're doing here. Give it some color. It is a currency. Zeros are not important. Not that there are any anyways. Don't summarize. Okay. And so now that we've created the total salaries, now we can go back to answering this question of what's the average of total salaries per department. All right. So here's the total salaries. Let's create the average. So average total salary. Oops. Let's total salaries average and now as you see here we can call total salaries because it is a explicit column that we created so with that we'll do that we'll slap this in here we'll see that the numbers should be one to one because on a per row basis the average of 35,000 divided by one is just one and that should be the case for everything else um, do that. so yeah so if, on a per row basis they should all be the same but what we're looking for here is right here, the average value. So the question is per department, so it's not quite 4736. But what is valuable in this number is we can double check by manually calculating out the number in Excel. And so if you pull up Excel, if you were to do the work in Excel, that is, you know, use the average function and highlight all these cells, we'll see that manually we expect $47,360 which is exactly what we get here. So the function is working as expected. So I think we should be pretty safe to pop it into the business group. So here, uh, the average of total sales per department is, you know, if you're in counting, it's about 38,000, but overall it's 47,000, okay? And so once again, if you wanna manually calculate that, that average, what you can do is you go to Excel, we go here. So for accounting, we should be expecting something in the 38,000s, so I'll do average. I'm going to highlight just the accounting salaries. So it should be 38,850. So going back to Power BI, it's 38,850, and it works. Okay, so that is um, how you would do it if you were using average, the function, and kind of the limitations and the workarounds. Um, but, you know, if you want to be more efficient, what you can do is you can also use average x. So, like I was saying before, any of the aggregate x functions should be used when there's any math involved, all right? So I'm going to create a new measure. I'm going to call this average x total salary. And what I'm going to do is call average x. So it needs a table and an expression. So the table I'm referencing is just called table. So I'll do that. What is the expression? The expression is I want you to multiply salary by bonus. So salary by bonus, all right? Calculate that. And let us, so this is the total salary that we calculated prior. So let us pull up the average X value. And what we expect to see is once again, on a 
per row basis, it should be one to one, all right? And as we see here roughly, it looks like it's one to one. But then once again, the, the beauty about this is it can also calculate the average of the entire thing or however you want to splice it, in which case we got 47,360. So just to once again confirm using brute force, let's go back to Excel file. We should be expecting a value of 47,360. That is what we get. So I would not be surprised if I throw this average X measure in here that we should be getting the same values as well. So 47,360 at the all up value under accounting at 38,850, which is once again, what we expected when we divided these four business or these four employees under this business group, okay? And that is the difference between um, average and uh, average X. Uh, average is a lot more limiting. If you really just need a simple singular column calculation, you use it. But honestly, for anything else, which is probably typically the case, you should be using average X. More to the point, average X encapsulates average. So if you wanted to use average X to calculate a single column, you could. Um, It'd be a little overkill though. So.